What's up guys, Dustin McDangles back here with another video and this is the NHL franchise mode series with the Nebraska Bucks as we are in the or we are at the midway point of this season here with the Nebraska Bucks of the 2026-2027 season and we are sitting very pretty here guys at the top of the division we're fighting for the Western Conference right now we're fighting for the President's Trophy the team is playing absolutely unbelievable Nick Suzuki absolutely on fire if you guys actually did miss the last episode and want to check out and see how we got here, I'll leave a card in the top right hand corner right now so you guys can go check that out. We've got a massive episode here today as we look to get through the rest of the regular season here uh, and possibly make some big time changes here to the squad actually before getting into playoffs in the trade deadline, which the deadline is actually going to be the last day of February, February 28th is our trade deadline day guys and i've been looking around here at the team looking at some future things here and we're gonna have to make some changes so without further ado let's let's hop into this episode guys and after looking here at the contracts always midway point of the season is the best place to take a look at your contracts and we've got a big time player here in Kashe, who's up for contract next year he's going to be a unrestricted free agent he is making seven million a year right now and the total points just, it isn't lining up here to somebody who we want to be paying $7 million to. 31 points so far in 37 games. The last two years have been a bit of a down year. He hasn't played full seasons, uh, but his last full season, I mean, he had a very good year. 37, or, or 73 points in 82 games played. That was now three seasons ago. And since then, he's sort of been on the injury list. Um, he again, he hasn't really done much for us this year. 31 and 37 is nice, but for somebody who is making seven million a year, it's just not going to happen. And sort of whenever you do take a look and what he wants, he wants 8.9 million dollars, guys, for next year. And if you we take a quick look, next year's cap space, we only have 16 million to work with, and we've got bigger pieces of the puzzle that we need to resign. And we've got two restricted free agent defensemen here, Lautner and Tinkinoff, both 85, both young, who we're going to need to re-sign. And Lautner, he wants $8.5 million. That is a lot for a defensive defenseman, and he honestly might have earned that. Uh, we might be able to get him down, maybe go sort of a, possibly a four-year deal at maybe $7.5 million. Because Tinkinoff, he also wants a good payday. Um, he wants five million, which if we get him, we could probably get him down to four eight is my guess. Uh, maybe four seven at the max. We also have Sammy Blaze, who we, we're gonna have to try and resign. He wants four million on the nose. Um, if we offer more years, I'd say maybe two years and maybe three and a half, we could probably get him because he does want to resign. Appleton, we don't know what he is worth yet. And then I actually took a look and sort of sent out an offer right away on Tucker Tynan, our backup goalie. He actually wants a, a pay cut. Um, <clears throat> we offered him, he wants to, he wanted two years at 800000 a year. So I said, we're, we're just going to shoot that right away. So what my thinking is, is that we trade Kashe. We trade him this year because I was looking at the lines. We can actually move Tippett. Um up to the first line because he does get the plus three he is only 85 but um at a young younger age owen tippett um he is he, i mean i wouldn't say younger he is 27 years old but if we move him up to this top line instead of kashi he actually fits that top line perfectly almost getting the plus five it's like literally so close to getting a plus five like it is actually crazy the only way we could is with Richie which I don't really want uh, but Vaseline and I'm okay with him plus three top two lines again we'll be getting Sammy Blaze back from injury and it's just a matter of replacing Kashe with somebody we could throw Saishian, Saishian into the lineup uh, which I kind of want to take a look and see if he automatically fits this third line let's actually swap him out here really quickly he does fit and then we get sammy blaze back which will be another sort of addition to that third line maybe move johansson back we'll see what we can do but um right now i think we're, we're gonna go ahead and possibly trade kashi i think again he's not putting up the points i want him to and i think we we move him now when he has some trade value which i will take a look here and see because i was also 
taking a look at the draft class. Um, and this is where it gets interesting. I saw here at the second pick right now, he is a sniper, Bradley Whitfield, elite medium potential. His similar style is Patrick Kane, and he is NHL ready. If we could possibly find a way to get another first round pick and trade up to get him, or even get the first overall pick, we'd, we'd take Bradley Whitfield in a heartbeat to basically replace Kashe. So I feel like we could be sacrificing possibly another run at the cup, but at the same time, I feel like we need to move on from Kashe because we're not going to be able to re-sign him, and I'd rather get something out of him. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's take a look here at his trade value. And as you guys can see, it is pretty high for somebody on an expiring deal. And it's just a matter of finding a team who would actually want him and has cap space. <clears throat> and honestly, nobody... I'm trying to see here who would actually want him. Pittsburgh doesn't. <clears throat> and Pittsburgh's actually the worst team in the NHL right now. So maybe... Well, they have Quinn Hughes. That's actually kind of crazy. And Sam Steele. So their team is sort of young, gun, sort of getting ready to make a run. And I want to try and get their first round pick, guys. I feel like we could try and snipe this. Pittsburgh would have more players. Ooh, we're going to have to try and sort this out. But let, let, let me... Uh, come back to you guys and see if we can make this trade work so here is our trade offer guys um, I don't know if this is going to go through we might need to offer more but we've got two for two second round picks Kashe for the Penguins first and Philip uh, Frederick Pera uh, 81 overall elite low potential he does fit our third line forward I don't know if this is going to through go through but if it does that'd be a nice little sort of trade off there and that trade is actually rejected uh, so let's see here if maybe we take off a second and I'm honestly willing to give up our first next year uh, and a second for Pittsburgh's first this year as well as we also have a first round pick um, to go with that. So let's see if that trade goes through. Trade is rejected there. Let's see if maybe we throw in another two third round picks. I'd say maybe next year because we we have so many third round picks we've been able to sort of stack up on picks so two third rounds a first second and Kashe for Pittsburgh's first and this Frederick Pira hopefully this goes through trade is rejected that's kind of crazy let's take those off let's add our second round pick as well this year two seconds a first and let's even throw in a third for next year we'll throw in the Winnipeg Jets third round pick and see if this trade goes through. Again, trade value really in our favor here. I don't know if they'll accept that. And they're not... Oh, man, they're not going to go for that. That kind of sucks. But because I, I want to try and trade up to get a higher pick. So let me go here and see if we can try and snipe a team for a low pick. So here is another trade offer, guys. For a first round pick from a struggling team, the Anaheim Ducks. We've got Kashe, two seconds and a first for Erickson Eck and their first round pick. He does have one year left, top six forward, 83 overall. It only fits forward line one in power play one. He is more of going to be sort of a player that we can plug and play for possible injuries. Uh, we're going to see if this trade goes through and it is rejected. So that is unfortunate. Let's see if maybe we, oh, we have to have a player on there, which is unfortunate. Let's see if, do they have any low goalies we could possibly take? They've got this Blum guy, which is kind of crazy. Uh, we could try and take Ranta back. That that would be a crazy little trade to get him back. Throw him in the AHL for a little bit. Maybe even just uh, let him retire. A um, actually, let's go for it. Let's ha let's let Ranta retire a Nebraska buck. Hopefully, he'll retire with us. Two seconds, a first, and Kashe for their first, basically, and Ranta, making sure we take a player off their books. Does this trade go through? And that is also rejected. That is absolutely crazy. That they're not they're not biting on this trade. I mean, it's a lot to give up for their first. Uh, I feel like it is almost worth it for them to actually take. Um, I'm trying to see here if there's any other player. This maybe this Alexiev kid, um, Alexander Alexiev, top four defensive pairings, 80 overall, three million. He does have three years left on his deal, so we might need to move him out eventually. See if this trade goes through is rejected. Um, let's throw in one more pick and see if we can get this to go through. Maybe even throw in a prospect 
Uh, let's see here. Rookie skaters. I don't want to give up any of these guys or rudder. Uh, let's check rookie goalies. No one really worth it. So we'll have to throw in a draft pick here. We'll throw in the Maple Leafs third for this year. And if this trade doesn't go through, we'll just continue on here with this season and see what we can get out of it. So let's go ahead, hop into the simulation. We'll try and make some more trades here at the trade deadline to move Kashe out. Uh, let's actually go back. I'll keep him on the third line. Actually, I'll keep him out of the lineup. Nah, we can't keep him out of the lineup. Let's move him. Let's actually put him in place of Appleton. Um, see if this will work. Throw Kashe in instead. Does get the plus one there on that bottom line. We could move this around to at least get the plus three for right now on that on that second line until Sammy Blaze gets back. So I'm okay with that right now. Uh, we'll roll with this to see how things go. Um, so let's go ahead here, hop into the simulation. Um, again, tried to get those trades to work. Obviously, they were a little ambitious, but you know, you get sometimes you gotta try to catch the big fish as we'll start this simulation here halfway through the season. Sammy Blaze is back. We'll let him heal up a little bit here. As Savari also back to play for the Burnaby Aces, starting the simulation off with a win against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Tucker Tynan is going to renew his contract at 800000 for two years. That is really awesome to see. Uh, Carrick injured for the Burnaby Aces. We'll let the coaches take We'll let Keith Yandel take care of that as we get a win there against the Ducks. A win against the Avalanche. And this team is stacked and unstoppable right now. Win there against the Sabres. Got a game here against the Coyotes. 4-3 win. Big game against the Blackhawks. We lose 4-2. Back-to-back, we lose actually against the Flyers as well. Uh, in a shootout, so we at least get a point out of it. The team is playing very well. We actually gave up first place in the division. Saishian is out. So this is where we'll actually put Sammy Blaze back into the lineup here and get him back to playing some full-time minutes here for the boys. Uh, 84 overall playmaker. He does get the plus one. Does he work on any other line? He does not. So honestly, we might roll with this the rest of the way. Um, man, that's just a really good lineup. It's really hard to sort of move things around to make it better uh, just when it's already pretty sick. Um, let's throw a Honan on the power play. He gets the plus three. Uh, extras. What do we need to do here? Uh, we should throw Kashe on this one. And maybe we keep Kashe. Maybe we don't re-sign him. Um, ah, it's, it's just it's tough because I want to try and get something out of him. It's just we most likely won't be able to do so. So we split our back-to-back -back there. Win against the Stars. Shootout loss against the Devils. Salishian is back to be in the lineup. Big game here against the Panthers. Bowie. Uh, we could possibly bring him back. What's his... Uh, let's take a look here at his... Ooh, man. That's a big contract. We're going to decline that at $2 million. Um, trade offer here for a second round pick. We're going to pass on that. I don't want to give that up. Big win there against the Panthers. Game against the Blue Jackets. We end up losing in a shootout. As we get into the All-Star break, I believe. Roslovic is injured. Um, and we actually lost in a shootout to the Edmonton Oilers. So, let's take a look here. Oh, man, that's tough losing Roslovic there off that fourth line. Suzuki still leading the way in points. We're leading the division, and we're in a battle for this President's Trophy. Uh, we're three points off the Lightning right now. So, uh, tough tough sledding here as Appleton's in the lineup there on that bottom line. Still getting the plus one, which is okay. Does Saishian work better on that pair? He gets the plus three. So I'd rather have that, getting the plus three. Uh, Suzuki's up to an 87, which is really nice to see. Uh, Byfield, how's Byfield been playing? He's had a solid year so far. Uh, Volchenkov, great year. Again, Suzuki leading the team in points. Kashe, eh, picking it up a little bit. Tippett, better ever since getting put on that first line. Shifley and Vaseline having some pretty decent years as well, so... Fingers crossed the boys keep it up here in this simulation. Obviously, it's the season is 
is great so far. It's a success. Um, I'm very happy with sort of the results and everything that we've been going through. So we'll simulate all the way here to the trade deadline where we might make a possible move to get Kashe out as we absolutely pump the Kings. Ross Levick is able to get back into the lineup, so we'll give him a few more games to heal up. Um, Jackson Tavares out with a mild concussion until February 14th. Uh, lost there. Mm. We're going to have to edit the lines here. Uh, I didn't mean to edit the lines here for the HL team. Uh, let's see here. Scratched players who can play. We'll get this guy in the lineup. Um, I'm more worried about the NHL lineup. Um, so we'll move our boy. Let's get Ross Levick back into the lineup here. He is a centerman. And he's down to an 81 overall. That's kind of crazy. Um, let's take a look at defense. And we've got Rudder in there right now. Can we move this around? Oh, I don't want to move Ahone in there on that top pair. Man, that's kind of tough. So we're going to have to roll with the minus one there on that bottom pair right now with Rudder. Um, and, and see how that plays out. A big win there against the Hurricanes. Um, as we continue on here with this simulation. Lost to the Lightning, which kind of sucks. That's a battle for the President's Trophy. Big win there against the Penguins. Jackson Tavares is back. We'll give him a few games to get back to good health. 11-1 to win against the Bruins, who are actually doing pretty decent in their own conferences. The Penguins actually fired their head coach. Lost there against the Canadians. A loss against the uh, Flames. Matt Roy is going to be out. Um, man, this kind of sucks right now. As we get a win there against the Islanders. Can we get a win here against the Preds? Ooh, Tinkinoff is going to be injured. So we'll swap uh, some players around here. We'll get our boy Tavares back into the lineup here. Get him back to playing. He's, only, he's our only left defenseman, which is kind of crazy. We, if we move Rudder up, he does get the plus one, which is nice. Uh, big game here against the, the Preds. We get the win 6-2. to two. Division opponent against the Wild, and we were able to get the victory there. A big game against the Jets, and we win 4-1. to one. So let's say we are going to be a conservative seller here, this trade deadline. And let's take a look and see... Sort of who's up and up for trades and who we can try and get out of this. Uh, Brock Besser actually up. Four years left on his contract at $9 million. Nolan Patrick actually a really nice deal. One year left on Brady Kachuk. I don't know how much he's going to want to re-sign for, which would be really sweet. Uh, Kashe up there. He's available, which is, is nice to see. Um... I want to see if Kachuk maybe can fit some of our lines. He only fits forward line three, which kind of sucks. I was going to say if maybe he fit a little bit better, we could bring him in. Pittsburgh trade Fabro. Ooh, that's kind of crazy for Ryan Nugent Hopkins. That's a big time trade there. Yamamoto plays for the Canucks. John Tavares is up for trade. Three years left on his deal. Nugent Hopkins. I was going to say he sold. Villamaki defenseman don't really need to bring him in not really any big time players up for trade that we are really interested in uh so let's see if we can maybe move kashi one more time here uh to a team that is struggling so here we are guys we've got this trade offer first round pick in kashi for san jose's first pick and jake vertranen um 81 overall 30 years old, but he does fit the bottom six forward lines and has only one year left on his deal. So if we do want to renew him, we can, uh, but not really sort of a, a top priority. Will this trade go through? And the trade is rejected. That is kind of crazy. What if we take for Tranon off? Would this go through? That trade is rejected. That's kind of crazy that they're not willing to take that. That is, I mean, that's a pretty good trade. Obviously, they would need to re-sign him, but they have plenty of cap room to do so. Let's throw in a couple of thirds because we, we have the thirds to do so. Uh, let's see if this will go through, and that trade is accepted. So we've got Kashe out. We've got another first-round pick, which could be a lottery pick, um, to see if we can try and get that one winger in the upcoming draft. And... 
Man, I don't really think we need to fill that hole of Kashi because we've got some pieces we can move in our lineup. Uh, but let's see here if maybe we can try and find something else. So we've got a trade offer here for a depth player in Akil Thomas with the LA Kings. He is 82 overall, 70, or 27 years of age. He is a playmaker offering sort of a prospect who I'm most likely going to get rid of anyways in a third and a fifth. Let's see if this goes through and the trade is accepted. So we do get Akil Thomas, depth player. I don't feel like we need to do anything else. So let's go ahead, sort of move our lineup around. Obviously, we've got two big time first round picks here for the first um, round this upcoming year, which I'm super excited about. So sort of keep your eyes peeled for that episode, which hopefully won't be for a while, uh, not until next week. So uh, again, let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the team here and see what the lines look like. So here are the new updated lines, guys. We've got Akil Thomas here on the second line, or the third line, I should say. And if <sighs> the thing is, if we actually swap in our boy Saishian, he actually fits better into the lineup there. So I kind of want to roll with that, that plus three there, and sort of keep Akil Thomas on the bench. We get plus threes for all of our lines, which is going to be huge here for this push. And then the defense is the same. Uh, I do want to take a look here at the goaltenders. Yari has been playing very well. 36 wins in 52 games played. He's got a 909 with a 261. And then Tucker Tynan, he's been playing okay. Not too bad for a backup 82 overall goaltender. Um, so yeah, that's that's how the team stacks up. Again, we've got a new another first round pick from the Sharks. And again, they're 48 points. They're second to last in their division. And they are pretty low as well. So they have a good chance of possibly getting the first overall pick, which would be absolutely huge. Honestly, anything top five out of the Sharks would be an absolute steal. But let's go ahead, finish the rest of the season here. We are sitting very high up in the rankings right now. Taking off back to full health, starting off the month of March with a shootout win against the Sharks, who we just stole their first round pick from. Giving up Kashe, another win in the shootout against the Golden Knights. A win against the Blues. Seishian has actually gotten a fractured jaw, so we're going to have to replace him right away with our boy Akil Thomas on that second line, or the third line, I should say. We'll throw him in there uh, and see what he can do. He does get the plus one, so at least he, it is a plus on that third line. Win there against the Senators. Can we get a win here against the... Rangers, we actually lose 7-1. to one. Saishian is back, so we'll put him in once he is back to full health. Lost there against the Leafs. We need to sort of pick it up here. Win against the Ducks. Can we get a win against the Avalanche? That is the real question. And we lose 5-2, to two, but we come back with a 5-4 to four shootout win. Game here against the Coyotes. We win 5-2. to two. We'll continue on with this sim. So we're getting close to the end of this season. Big game against the Blackhawks. We win 5-4, which is actually huge. Another game there against the Flyers. We win 3-0. Game against the Stars is a 4-1 win. A game against the Devils is a 7-5 win. As we will get into this last month of the season. We are this is our best season yet, guys. Best sim of the team. Honestly, moving Kashi out was not a bad move. Suzuki with 93 points in 77 games played. That is actually mental. Um, so right now it's a battle for the President's Trophy. The Lightning have us by two points, it looks like. So it's going to come down to these final games. Let's actually get Saishian back into the lineup here um, to get the plus. Actually, I kind of want to see how Akil Thomas has been playing for us ever since coming over. He's got 10 games played and only three points minus two. So we're going to take him out We'll throw Seishian in. He does get the plus three, so that boosts Byfield and Sammy Blaze, which I think that's a dark horse third line, if you ask me, um, with the plus three added on top of that. So let's keep going here. Last few games of the season. Are we going to be able to steal the President's Trophy or not is the real question. Uh, super happy. Obviously, we're going to be... We're going to be conference champions for sure as we win against the panthers can we get a win against the blue jackets is the real question they're a pretty good team we get a shootout win can we get a win against the oilers we do six to three we lose against the kings can we get a win at the end of the season here against the capitals it might come down to the wire we win four to two 
Lightning with 120 points. And we, I just saw the notification across the top. We won the President's Trophy, guys. For the first time in franchise history, we are the regular season champions of the NHL. I want to take a look at the AHL. The squad did pretty good. They just missed out on winning the division. Um, and I actually think they just missed out on winning the actual AHL regular season as well. It came down to the last few games, just not able to pull that out. But, man, what a crazy good season it's been for the NHL team. Suzuki, 98 points. That is kind of crazy. Let's actually... Let's go back. It'll show it'll show regular season points here. Let's see how Suzuki and the boys stacked up. Suzuki, 98 points. Shifley, 96. Volchenkov, his best season in the league with 85. Vasilainen, or Vasilainen, 75. Johansson, he had put up 64. Tippett, really well. Uh, 61 points in 72 games. That After moving him to the first line, I think that was a great move. Byfield, Ahuna, and Richie actually putting up some good points as well. I think a disappointing season. I was going to say, where is our boy Jones? Not as great of a season as he had last year. Uh, let's take a look at goalies here. How do we finish up? A 906 with a 269. Honestly, Yari coming up clutch. Tucker Tynan, not terrible for 16 games played for a rookie season in the NHL. Uh, let's take a look here at where Suzuki finished up. Man, I'm so happy we got the President's Trophy, but now it's about going back to back. Man, Suzuki not even that high up. He was just below Braden Point and Connor McDavid. But a good showing there. Top two players on our team in the top ten for points. Uh, Patrick Kane Barzell and this Ricard Heiskanen. 119 points. This kid is legit. He's had a few seasons in the league, and obviously you can see just an absolute crazy output this year. Uh, with 119 points but that is gonna be it for today's episode guys we're gonna take a look at the playoff tree here first uh we got the blues in the first round the blackhawks avalanche oilers and um flames so the battle of alberta there and then we've got the wild and canucks over in the east we've got rangers blue jackets we've got islanders sabers Panthers, Bruins, and Lightning, and Hurricanes. And I want to actually see where the San Jose Sharks finished, guys. How low did they go is the real question to see if that was a massive trade for that pick. Let's actually take a look at the entire league. We'll go to the very bottom here. Where did the San Jose Sharks finish? If it is super low, I'm actually going to be really happy about this. They were third worst, guys. I'm so shocked they traded us their first round pick. So that is a lottery pick that we picked up from the San Jose Sharks. We could either stay put at third, drop, or even best chance, best case scenario, move up and take that first overall pick. So crazy stuff. I'm excited for the next episode, which is going to be the playoffs. We're going to see how the team does, but that's going to be it for today's episode. Let me know if you guys want me to make any line changes going into the playoffs. I think where we're at right now is pretty good with our lines. Um, so again, let me know. I'll sort of put the lines up right now for you guys to take a look. Plus threes across the board. The defense is sort of the only question mark. We do get the plus three on the top line and sort of goes plus one, plus one. Can't really move anything else really around. But again, let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys have a good one. And as always, stay dusty.